Hi, Misha here, and this video is just totally planned, I, I promise. <laughs> Actually, I was going through some uh, old files and stuff, and I found a couple of clips I recorded last summer while I still had the ATI Galino, uh, Galino, whatever you say, <laughs> Galio. Their uh, their Galil copy, which you know got went away later on because I I didn't have a use for it. It was just here for a while, and we did try it out for about three months. But after the first couple of videos we posted last May of 2019, there really were no updates. It it ran and ran well for us. But yeah, before boxing it up to send it off, I did record a, com a comparison with my uh, Jeff Miller ARM build kind of going over details and features so I'm gonna present those clips in just uh, just a minute but uh, yeah I wanted to talk about just the status of the the Galil. A funny thing happened you know we had IWI USA they first released the Travor <laughs> The X95, the Uzi Pro, and they released the Galil Ace series, which is the only Galil that Israel still makes. And this is a modernized gun that really took the path going from original Galil to the micro Galil, which was updated and updated, and then finally the essentially the micro Galil was updated so much that it became this. If you look at late production micro galils, they have a lot of the same features like the dust cover, the left side charging handle, and so on. So this is their modern galil, you know. And they this is the pistol in 223. They also offer a carbine. And they do these in of course 762 by 39 and 308, 762 NATO as well. So you know it's all Israeli. It has the short about an eight and a quarter barrel removable flash rider it has these uh, tubular handguards with rail panels underneath it has a full length top rail with iron sights the ones we get take AR-15 mags they do offer another version over there for military customers that take standard Galil mags but I don't blame them a bit for you know doing this because this is what Americans generally for shooting purposes would want Plus, I'm going to be honest, Galil mags are not the best. Um, I deal with a lot of surplus mags and what I do for a living. A lot of them. And either Galil mags are just treated really roughly, or they're just prone to some just, you know, breakages or denting. Because I've seen more Galil mags with bent feed lips and dents that affect function, or just overall wonky lugs and stuff, than I have just about anything else. So yeah, with that, and they're kind of expensive, new, and surplus ones you can't always count on, I don't blame them a bit for bringing in the AR-15 version. And they, they, of course, they ship them with a side folding brace and all that. And a lot of us really like these, and they were priced pretty fairly at one time, getting as low as $1,000, but more, depending on the exact model, especially when they came out around $1,500. But in 2019, a, a funny thing happened. ATI released their Galio, which was a U.S. kit build. So U.S. receiver, U.S. barrel. And it was built off an original Israeli IDF surplus ARM parts kit. And it was priced at around a thousand bucks. Maybe 1100 depending on the handguard. And people really flocked to it. Because despite having the modern Ace, which was truly a IWI product, a lot of people just wanted this classic look here. Again, now this isn't the ATI. It's gone. This is mine, though. And so they, they've sold really well. In fact, so much so that more recently, they've come out with a pistol version using... SAR kits, 
which had the 13 inch barrel. Now, this is my South African LM5, which is their version of a 13 inch, and this is a rifle with an extension. But uh, ATI has done a pistol, SAR. And they've also sold just bare receivers, which tend to be about 400 bucks. And they've sold barreled actions for kind of a do it at home kit. So they've, they have expanded the line this year, but of course the whole COVID situation and supply shortage means even that just checked before recording this now, they're, all this is pretty much out of stock everywhere. But in theory, that's what they're doing. And then late in 2019, Classic Firearms started releasing the build that they did through James River Armory, JRA, and there was a lot of talk about which is better, the ATI or the JRA. Before the JRA came out, everyone was kind of saying, oh, it's going to be better, the ATI. But the ATI's only real issue was that the first production run, the way the magwell was machined out, did not always take surplus mags. This was partly ATI's fault because they machined it to really focus on TAPCO mags. But on the other hand, Surplus mags are kind of chancy, like I said again. There's a lot of different dimensions. You have South African, which are made a little bit different. You have all the Israeli ones made from the 70s, 80s. And so there's a lot of tolerance differences in those mags. And then again, finally, as we said in our second video, sometimes when a gun fails, it's not the gun's fault, it's the magazine's fault. In fact, we've tested that out and put those mags that were jamming in the ATI gun, and this gun, and this gun, and uh, they didn't work great either. Uh, once a Israeli mag is kind of wonky, it usually stays wonky. Sometimes you can bend the feed lips back, which was one of the problems one of the mags had, but sometimes it's just not worth the effort. Anyway, uh, ATI made some minor adjustments to the mag well, and that seemed to fix the major problem we heard about. There weren't problems as with the early centuries with the receivers. And uh, the barrels seemed fine. They were 1 in 7 twist rate, 18 and a half inch. And most of the parts, including the trigger group, were original Israeli. So about the only other complaints you heard was some people would get guns that were built from used parts that had some wear. But most of the kits they used were in pretty good shape. So yeah, we... I haven't really talked about it in a year, just because there hasn't been much to talk about. So with that, let's uh, let's cut over to me from the past and comparing features and how the receivers are done, and, and just so on and so forth. ATI misspell Galil. Very first shots. The uh, mag's locking out a little better, so I think Jay's right that it may wear in. Let's see how it goes. I got some blast back that time. Since it's wearing in, we were able to get an Orlite mag to lock in, so let's see if it'll shoot. So here is the ATI. This will probably be the last time you'll see it. And I thought it would be good to put it up against my Israeli Galil ARM build. This was done by uh, Jeff Miller, Ting Galil, some years ago from an original Israeli military type parts kit. It is a rewelded receiver, so this is the pieces are original IMI. And he did paint part and then leave the barrel 
phosphated as on an original. And you can see this in several videos, so I won't harp on it. It does have the uh, bipod and stuff. And comparing to the ATI, we have the same flash rider. We have the same gas block, just without the uh, bipod, bayonet lug. No, uh, no front night sight, but you could put one on. Wood handguard. This one's in the wood color. This one was actually in the kit painted, which would make sense to do for a military. Now we can see some differences in the receiver. This is a very slab side receiver. No, um, no cutout for the scope mount here. Slab back here. That's really the big difference is just the receiver because everything else is Israeli. For example, this one has the kind of earlier hooked butt plate stock. This one has this, you know, more common straight butt plate. You'll notice this one has the cheek rest kind of plastic tube. This one does not. It was taken off, I'm sure, during the phosphating because they reparked it process. Looking at the undersides, if these will stay up, you can see the barrel here, in front of the magwell here. This does has the dished out, not the straight trigger guard. You can see where you want to attach your bipod if you do, or your NATO type bayonet. And on mine, just for completeness' sake, so you can see the bipod underneath and the receiver. There. Galil. ATI with the TEPCO mag. Hi, it's current day me again. I need to interject here before we go forward. Looking at what I recorded over a year ago, I'm going to say something wrong. In there, I say that the ATI, I think, has a cast receiver. That's because previously a lot of U.S. Galil receivers had been cast, including the Caspians that Century used later on. Now, they, Century kind of plays this game with the word cast versus machined. They, they rough cast a block and then machine it into final shape, but it's still initially cast. Since that time, I've, I've read up and know that, uh, yeah, they, they say that it's uh, 4140 steel with uh, molybdenum and stuff in it. So it does seem like they are using a real machined receiver block for the ATI Glios. So I just wanted to correct that before going forward. However, what I say about casting and how to do it properly and the fact that it's not an automatic deal breaker is still very relevant. So yeah, I just wanted to, to poke in there with that. Now as far as I know, the uh, ATIs did not have chrome line barrels. They were certainly US made barrels if nothing else. Alright, so let's go back to a younger, more innocent me. A me before COVID. Uh, the nice days of 2019. Alrighty, folks. So yeah, here's the underside of mine. The bipod. How it mounts here. 
There are a few different patterns of bipod. Mine too has the dished trigger guard. Some are straight. And yeah, let's flip it over. And there are a couple of actual differences on this side. Uh, here's the receiver. Safety. You'll notice this has a lightning cut. Here. South African receivers would actually have a similar lightning cut on the other side as opposed to the scope cut out. Also, we have a connection point on the handguard retainer for this carry handle. Very FAL inspired, although it's not the same. Late Israeli ARMs would not have that. And that's why a lot of these ATIs probably won't even have a spot for one, or if they had it might have been removed during a refurbishment in Israel. The carry handle really is pretty uh, pretty mediocre at best. But you'll see here it does not have a lightning cut. It's a, again a slab. To be fair, your pre-ban IMIs are also slab receivers. So it's not really a ding against it. One thing I did notice, if you look on the back here, I'm going to do my best, on behind the pistol grip, you see it's very rounded there, very elegant curve. On the ATI, it is much more squared off. With kind of a square shape to it, which I guess squared off things would be right. Hey, it's been a long wait, guys. <laughs> That's just an artifact of modern manufacturing and so on and so forth. As far as I know, these receivers are cast, whereas your IMIs would be. machined, forged, but if casting is done right, there's nothing against it. It's just that too many companies have done cheap castings, and, well, yeah, but, I mean, castings, when done properly, they've worked very well for Springfield and Ruger and even FN and other quality brands, even SIG, SAN in Switzerland and HK in Germany have used castings in different things. So it's all a matter of quality. But yeah, before we kind of concluded our kind of long duration review of the ATI, I wanted to put it next to the closest thing I had to an Israeli military Galil. And I hope this helped out a little bit. We have plenty of videos on that Galil as well. Well, we appreciate you tuning in. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. Please feel free to comment below. We really enjoy it and we'll do our best to respond. And if you haven't, you might check out the first two videos in our series reviewing the ATI. And if you just like the history of the Galil, we've got some videos on that as well. This is Misha, and we'll catch you very soon next time. And ATI again. Clear. Last mag of the day for the Glial.